Hello and welcome to the guide today where we're going to be taking a look at the Android OS, the mobile operating system that is Android. This is going to be a course overview in chapter one where we're going to be taking a look at what exactly is Android. Through this course and guide, we're going to be covering a lot of different stuff throughout the mobile operating system here. We're going to look at, of course, in this video, what is Android as a whole, collectively looking at its roots, what makes it unique and all that, and in a general overview and pros and cons of Android. We're in chapter two, we're gonna compare it to that of iOS, another popular mobile operating system out there. Chapter three, we're gonna get into talking about the best selling Android devices and how you can go about choosing your device. Chapter four, we'll overview the Google Play Store, which is Android's app market. Chapter five, we'll take a look at the basic Android functionality and features as well as configuring your device. Six, battery saving tips when it comes to your Android device. And chapter seven, top 10 Android apps that you need to get and that are which are essential to Android. Chapter eight, the ability to transfer data onto Android, how you go about doing that, syncing it, and uh, you know whether it's transferring old data or moving uh, new data on, etc. So chapter nine, mi migrating from iOS to Android. So if you are in the process of switching platforms, how do you go about migrating from iOS, which is one of the popular Android, uh, one of the big competitors and popular mobile operating systems out there, uh, in comparison to Android. So how you go about taking your data and moving it over. And lastly, chapter 10, a course recap. So again, there's a lot of stuff we're going to go over from the basic ins and outs of Android to transferring data onto your device, as well as if you're going to be moving from one of the more uh, prominent operating systems out there, what the pros and cons are to Android as a whole. And with that, let's jump into chapter one. What is Android? So Android is an operating system that is available nowadays on multiple platforms. It was initially released back in 2008 for mobile phones here and is based on a Linux based kernel. So it's a very secure and very flexible uh, software that nowadays you can find on tablets, cell phones, uh, TV set top boxes, TVs in general, and many other devices as Google has kind of made it widely available across the board here. So you can see here on the contents from the Wikipedia article here, there's tons of versions of Android since it's released in 2008. We're now currently on 4.4 KitKat, and there's been a lot of different iterations since the years have come by. Now, Android is based on what's called the direct manipulation UI. What this means is a user interface that is very popular for its touchscreen uh, devices. So in combination with Android, which is the software and the hardware, it's known for being able to recognize things like taps, swipes, all those types of gestures, and what's known as the direct manipulation UI, which we'll get more into later on. Uh, as far as devices goes, like I said, it's available on phones, tablets, and many, many other external interfaces. You're seeing now Android being uh, utilized in many, many uh, different, whether again, it's TV set-top boxes or other external hardware that runs uh, on, on multiple devices out there, like now watches, they have uh, smart watches being run off of Android and all these other devices out there. It's definitely branched out. And lastly, it is the most popular mobile OS. That's a big thing to note. It is currently the most popular mobile operating system as it sells across multiple devices and multiple versions. So there's tons of hardware and multiple versions of software that it's available on as of current. Now elaborating on Android OS as a whole, it is released by Google under what's known as an open source licensing. So the source code, the actual you know, code that is Android has been released openly out there to developers and people like, this is what makes Android so popular. It's known for its open playing field. What this open source code allows people to do is it allows people to add great pieces of new applications and software and tweaks to the underlying uh, look and feel and functionality that is Android. It gives it to the community in a way for them to modify it and make it to their liking. And then from there, share that on with uh, other users of the same device, hardware, software version, all of that great stuff. Now, Android OS is also known for its fragmentation. Fragmentation meaning that while Android is the most popular OS out there, it's the most popular because it's on multiple devices and there's multiple versions. No one Android device is the same. Where in the case like on iOS, for example, you usually have, nowadays you have two devices being released at a time and there's only those two devices that are really uh, known. You still have the older devices, but with Android, there's a lot of different manufacturers. It's known for its multiple manufacturers. So you have Samsung, you have HTC, Motorola, LG. Now Google even does its own line of specific manufactured phones, both hardware and software like Apple. But what this means is it's very fragmented. There's a lot of different hardware out there. There's no one specific Android you know, phone. There's multiple at a time and not all of them are always running the same version. Also Android though is also known for its 
customization, whether it is a tablet or a mobile phone, Android is really, really known for the customization and getting the both feel that you like aesthetically, aesthetically, you can adjust how your home screen is, how your environment is. You can really reskin your operating system from the ground up. And in general, it, it's very, very known for its uh, kind of playful UI in the sense that you really get to make it your own. You're not so much as restricted. You can root it, you can really make it, make the device however you wanna make it. And again, like I said, it's known for the multiple manufacturers. So you're not gonna, Android isn't limited to just Google, even though Google uh, you know, has their own set phones that they release like the Nexus line of phones, which is specifically made by Google, both hardware and software. Whereas it's also licensed out, like I said, to Samsung, Motorola, LG, etc. All right, so let's break down the Android software. It really comes down to three main things when you look at Android as a whole. That comes down to the interface, the versions, and the application. So we're briefly gonna take a look at all of these. Again, these are some of the th three key things that really make up the software as a whole. And then you'll see this kind of scattered across a multiple array of, uh, of hardware. So in conjunction, of course, with the software, there is the hardware, but uh, there is no, you know, in terms of hardware, there is no reoccurring uh, theme. Manufacturers like Samsung and LG and Google really get to do what they please as far as hardware goes. There's different processors, there's different speeds, bigger screens, smaller screens. However, when it comes to software, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the, uh, you know, what, what the constants are as far as the current version. So interface wise, Android has always been known, like I said, for its direct manipulation UI. What this means specifically is that it has been really built for touch screens and, and it can interact with things like a tap, a hold, a swipe, a pinch. It knows the difference between these sort of things. There's Android devices that actually have what's known as haptic feedback where you tap the screen and the screen in conjunction will vibrate or give you some sort of signal physically so you know that it registered the tap. So again, that's kind of going back to the software and hardware integration uh, and, and Android having so many different hardware out there, you it really is a, a toss up on what you'll get and how the manufacturer chooses to integrate with that of the software. But like I said, it's known for the direct manipulation. So you directly input some sort of physical touch or swipe or gesture or press and the Android oper operating system will reciprocate and it's really, really known for that. Additionally, it's known for the custom UI. Here on the right, you can see a custom skin and theme that is applied to an Android phone as far as icons go, the look and feel, and the home screens. The home screens on Android are very, very customizable. Not only do you have a customizable notification bar and system bar, but you have the ability to add widgets, whether it's a clock or a weather app or a compass on your home screen. You can add different skins, whether you want to, you know, monochromatic black and white, all colorful. You want to skin it like iOS or Windows Phone or any other operating system out there, you can do that as well on Android. And this is all, uh, a lot of it is out of the box. However, you can get further access by doing what's known as rooting your Android phone to get more access down to the system level. Uh, and this is all, you know, beamable on, on, on uh, Android's end because it's so open and, it, and a lot of the code is released out there for developers alike to mess around with. Now, that being said, we're gonna quickly take a look at an interface demo here. So you're gonna be seeing me go through an Android device uh, as I kind of show you the main look and feel of, of, of one of the more current Android softwares. We're gonna go more in depth with this in the future uh, chapters. So, you know, be, be sure to check into those as well. All right, so here we are taking a look at an Android device. This is actually a simulated version of Google's Nexus 7, running one of the more later versions of Android. And as you can see here, it features a much more customizable UI here. And you'll see here you'll the, the ability on Android, which is commonly uh, on most devices here, you'll have the standard home button, you'll have a back button, you'll have the ability to check out all applications that you have recently used as well as a, a dock for you to put the most used apps. Uh, so anytime you jump to home screen to home screen, you'll always have the apps down here. You'll have this button which allows you to jump and look at most of your apps or your app drawer as it's known as long, along with widgets. So you can drop these widgets here onto your actual home screen. So again, if I wanna add, for example, you can see I have multiple widgets here. If I wanna add this digital clock, I can add this just by tapping on it and then dragging it out and then releasing it on my home screen here. You can see now I have that there and I can easily just jump into it. Again, no and one Android version is the same. There's multiple versions out there. There's multiple skins that you can get to customize your UI, but this is just the basic look at Android on the, uh, this is a 4.3, so one of the more recent versions. You also have the Google search bar here. Uh, on more later versions, like on 4.4, you'll have something called Google Now. Uh, Android is also known for the quick toggles. You'll have things like this, which allow you to quickly switch off things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 
location tracking or brightness. So this is just a really, really quick access and you can have up to multiple home screens depending on how you want to really set up your UI. So really it is all up to you. You have the ability to browse through your settings here, of course, and really get in depth and take a look at everything. Again, we're gonna be taking a more uh, deeper look into the basic functions and features of Android and its UI, but this is just a brief overview of the user interface on one of the more recent versions of Android here. All right, now that we kind of got a tour and a little look and feel for the Android interface, let's talk about the version. The versions is another thing, like I said, Android is really known for. Starting out with the early, early days, they've since kind of done it in an alphabetical order and in an in dessert themed uh, naming system. So back when Android 1.5 was released, it was known as Cupcake, and then it went on to 1.6, Donut, 2.0, Eclair, Froyo, Gingerbread, Honeycomb, Ice Cream Sandwich, Jelly Bean, and what we're currently on is 4.4 Android Kit Kat. So it has that kind of colorful and dessert theme to it. But again, Android is known for its multiple versions. There's a lot of different hardware out there that you'll currently find maybe running 4.1, 4.4, 4.0. And that's kind of getting back to the theme of all Android devices aren't really built the same. You're going to find a lot of different devices, whether they're just simple phones out there that run, you know, much older versions of Android or very, very cheap tablets or whatever they may be. They run all sorts of versions of Android and it's never really just one unified OS that's currently in all devices. So again, not all Android OSs are the same. That's a key thing to remember. So for example, we have KitKat here, which is the latest Android, which features things like Google Now, a new user interface, smart caller ID, emoji support, all of that fun stuff. And then you have here on the right, Ice Cream Sandwich, which is a little bit older of a UI, and that had its own UI. That had its own uh, series of uh, features like sizable widgets and face unlock. So while the newer versions like KitKat build off of the previous versions, you're still gonna find 2014, 2013 devices running Ice Cream Sandwich. You're gonna find uh, you know, some tablets running even older versions of Android. It really is kind of a, a scattered game, and that's one thing to know about Android. Uh, the ability for them to make such cheap hardware because they can make, you know, the manufacturers can manufacture a really, really simple phone or tablet and then slap Android on it also means that the market, again, is very fragmented. So that's one thing to note about Android as a whole. Now, last but not least, applications. One of the big important things about any mobile device and operating system as a whole, how does the application market? Well, as of current, there are 1.3 million plus applications in the Google Play Store and growing. Again, the Google Play Store is what allows you to download uh, applications. And since it has really, really grown in terms of its uh, categories and the number of apps being released for Android, and nowadays a lot of big apps are being released on par with iOS and Android at the same time. Again, so the marketplace is known as the Google Play Store. You can browse this on the web or on your Android device to look at all of the apps available. It offers both free and paid apps, which you can purchase via your Google account. So that's a really, really good convenience. If you already have a Gmail account or anything of that sort, you can link that with your Google Play. And one thing Google Play is really known for, it's a much more open market. The same way Android OS as a whole is more open, Google Play allows for more applications on there. So developers who are looking to make more unique applications are, for example, Android has the ability for you to install antivirus software since, again, the software is more open and unique. Uh, there's different antivirus software you can install via Android and different, you know, wallpapers and, and all these crazy things that you can find in the Google Play Store. So it, it's known as a much more open market. So for example, here on the right, you see the current, as of right now, the top Android categories happen to be education, entertainment, lifestyle, business, and then personalization. So these are the kind of big five categories in the Google Play Store as of current. Getting down to market share, like I said earlier in the beginning, Android is one of the top OS in the mobile space right now. And it's constantly growing quarter for quarter. It sh and that's for multiple reasons because one, first off, it ships more devices as a whole. You need to understand that Android ships way more devices than Apple does or any other, you know, Windows or any other manufacturers simply because they manufacture more devices in allowing the operating system, the software, which is really the key element of all of it, being it being it's an open environment and allows for multiple manufacturers to grab it and put it on their devices, they have tons and tons of more models to ship. They never just have, you know, one flagship device. Samsung has a flagship device. LG has a flagship device. Google has a flagship device. And those will sell hundreds of thousands up to millions of devices. So Android as a whole ships more devices. Number two, 
their market share is much bigger because they offer a range of prices. While the iPhone is just a set price and then you have tiered pricing for the bigger models or for the you know storage, Android has phones that you can get for you know under fifty dollars, and there's phones that you can get for five hundred dollars and near thousand dollars. You know you have a range of prices, and that's just not phones. It's as well as tablets. You'll have two hundred dollar tablets, eight hundred dollar tablets. It, it it's not a fixed pricing system like Apple, for example, has. Uh, and we'll look more into that in as far as comparison versus iOS and Android and the software elements, what kind of what's limited and what it has and what it doesn't have. Uh, but again, the range of prices allow for the market share. Uh, to, to be much more broader and, and growing in the sense that you have people who uh, want to buy more expensive devices and people who want to buy more affordable devices for an everyday thing to use. And last but not least, again, there's multiple platforms out there. Android as a whole consists of all the versions we talked about. There's, you know, KitKat, there's Froyo, there's uh, Ice Cream Sandwich. So you're, you're not just accounting for the current OS. It, it, it's definitely you know, has a big, big market share out there due to the fact that it ships more devices and has multiple uh, software as a whole in terms of versions out there in the wild. All right, to end it off here, we're going to talk a little bit about some basic pros and cons of weighing everything out overall. We took a look at what is Android from a software standpoint, looking from the UI, touring around it a little bit, and really kind of getting into the nitty gritty about what makes Android Android. But as far as pros and cons go, here's how we weigh it out. First off, pros. It's an affordable device range. That's one of the big pros about Android. It offers a various amount of hardware out there, and uh, we're going to focus more a little bit on hardware in the future chapter, so stay tuned for that. But there's so many different hardware, like I just talked about, tablets, phones. There's just so much out there. So it gives you a range of stuff to buy depending on your price range. That's a big, big pro. Number two, customizable. If you're really somebody who wants full control over your device, Android really offers you that. The ability to customize it, import new Android versions on your uh, device and, and customizing the UI, the feel, the look, and everything, then Android really is, is your best bet. If you really want full control and system access to your phone and or tablet and device, that's one of the big pros Android has to offer. And lastly, flexible hardware. There's a choice. Uh, you know, I spoke earlier about the device range. You have the ability to get Android devices like the newer Samsung Notes and Galaxy phones that have, you know, five inch, five plus inch screens, so really, really big screen sizes. Uh, or you can go with a phone that has a 3.5 to a 4.5 inch screen. You know, you can. There's mid range screens. There's there's larger screens. Uh, screens that have support touches or touch styluses, I should say. Uh, some uh, tablets that are 10 inches and some that are, you know, seven inch tablets. That's the thing with Android. They have a really big flexible hardware because it's opened out to multiple manufacturers. You'll find so many different people uh, and, and so many different hardware for you to choose depending on your on your needs and your personal preference. Now, getting down to the cons, it is fragmented. I talked a lot about earlier. Um, you know, not one version of Android is the same. So while you may understand how to use one Android, you know, phone or device, it may be different on, on another one. And there's different skins that manufacturers add on top of Android version. So it gets a little bit confusing in, in that sense. Number two in the cons list, there is a little bit of fewer accessories as far as accessory market goes, cases, uh, any sort of external hardware, just for the reason being that there's so many different devices being made for Android, unlike iPhone, which usually has one specific uh, you know, model for the year. Uh, so there's, there's fewer accessories. And last but not least, security is something, uh, it's not a big issue, but it is something to worry about. There is statistically way more malware and sort of viruses available on Android just because it's a much more open and open playing field. There, There's a bigger, and it's on a bigger market share as far as global market share. There's more Android devices out there. It's a bigger target for security risk and, and hacks and, and, and bugs and all that sort of nature. So so that's something to consider as far as Android goes. Again, I want to make this pros and cons list after talking about what Android is as a whole to give you an overview of what Android is, where it lacks and where it really packs a lot of great things. In the second chapter of the video after this, we're going to be talking about Android versus iOS. So stay tuned for that. Definitely check that out to get more about the pros and cons angle of Android and what it uh, offers in comparison to that of another and one of its biggest competitors, which is Apple's iOS. Thanks a lot for watching, hope you enjoyed, and hope to see you in the next video.